excited to talk about this idea of creating educational communities and the, the communication and leadership tools that should be used to help support this, this idea. We're passionate about it and we think it's the key to student, student success. So during the next 45 minutes or so, uh, I'll cover some material and we'll also have some Q&A at the end uh, if there is any. So, I, 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 and I want to explain what it means by creating educational communities, kind of what we mean by that and how Paralink is providing those tools kind of to make it happen. So when we talk about creating educational communities, this means understanding that a student uh, in, in school is influenced by three main spheres or areas that can kind of have a direct impact on his or her success. And throughout this presentation, I want to use, uh, we'll use a student named Amy. Amy in the middle school, she's a good student, she has supportive parents, and she has a lot of goals and aspirations in life of what she's wanting to try to do. So how can these spheres of influence support and help Amy in accomplishing those goals? So, and, and each sphere has its own uh, stakeholders, it has its own important individuals that, that have a need to share or receive information regarding Amy's status and kind of her success, trying to deliver the right information in the right way and at the right time. When information exchange successfully occurs, these educational communities are established, and Amy is on her way to, to higher achievement, she, she's more engaged, and student improvement improves, and I hope to explain that uh, a little bit more. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about kind of the, this, this information exchange at its core, and in, in, the, in, the, in this new era of information exchange. Uh, my, my mother, bless her heart, a couple weeks ago, she texted me um, which she's just kind of getting into, text messaging. And, and she, she texted me all sorts of excitement and said, Jonathan, I just found out that I can text pictures. And I kind of was just sitting there as I was sitting in my office when I received this text message, and I was just kind of smiling to myself as I thought, oh, Mom, bless your heart, figuring out that we can send, that we can send text messages. Um, but, it's, but it's fascinating how we're entering this new age of communication. And, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. I'm not an expert in this, but I, but I have done uh, my homework, and I see it happening all the time with Twitter, Facebook, social media, YouTube, the text messaging, uh, you know, all the different modes that are happening there. And there's some fascinating statistics that, that you can find that support this idea of entering this new age of, of communication and the trends that we're kind of seeing, which is interesting. So here's some stats you can see that most of them we... Uh, we took from the Nelson uh, group there as they've done some research. But the, what's interesting is this increase in smartphone users. And, and what's even more interesting is that the mobile phones are the main source of internet, internet access for one quarter of the smartphone population. So we're seeing that uh, more and more individuals are purchasing, investing in smartphones, and that then is becoming their main source of, of internet access. Look at some of these numbers. So the smartphone penetration on the left, mobile, there's these two spheres that are really coming closer to each other and they're really influencing the way information is being exchanged. So if you look at the, the income level there versus, um, uh, versus the age, you see that you know, for the 55 to 64 year olds, as the income level increases, okay, there's, there starts to become an increase in the number of smartphones that are purchased there. But then look at the 18 to 24 year olds, like these younger, and I, and I believe this number, this age is, goes, uh, is, is, is going down, right? It's, it's even the 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds, not just the 18 year olds, but it's staying pretty consistent, the smartphone penetration. 30% uh, use smartphones as a primary internet connection. Looking at the social side of things, right? We've, 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 you've probably read articles and seen lots of this. I know districts, this is, this is becoming more and more relevant to school districts. It wasn't a couple of years ago. They were kind of scared, it, it appeared, when we would talk to school districts, superintendents especially, about Facebook and about social media, some of these other things. But now it's becoming more and more relevant, more and more important. So kind of an idea of how, uh, how information is being exchanged in this social sphere. Right, that's amazing. 13 minutes of every hour on the internet is spent on some sort of social media site. That's amazing. And so true. I remember when I was in college, um, we, we, had, we had Facebook and, and, uh, and we were looking at things all the time and people were always saying, gosh, I'm, I can totally get addicted. My wife even said that last night that she was on Facebook. She's like, gosh, I could spend so much time just looking at stuff and, and commenting on things here on Facebook. So it's amazing. So these, 
Listen, it's fascinating, these trends that we're seeing and this shift. So knowing this information, you know, how should that influence the way we approach and think about school to home communication, right? Thinking about parental and community member involvement. What type of 21st century tools do we need, right? We have Amy here in the middle and she's being influenced by these different spheres, but how should that information uh, exchange occur? Uh, and there, can, there could be an hour long discussion, you know, hours and hours of, uh, and I, of theories and ideas behind this, but I want to talk about some of the things that ParentLink has done to try to support this new age of communication, the need to rethink the way that we uh, exchange information, and the way we support these educational communities, uh, in, especially in these, in these three main spheres of influence. So let's talk about the school first. This is where, this is definitely where we're, uh, as technology and, and educators, uh, you're most familiar with. And being a former technology teacher myself, I know that everything done at the school and the district is focused on helping Amy be successful, right? It's even in the technology department. It, it, all work and decisions are influenced by this almost tangible and, and invisible hand um, of helping kids succeed. And, and more than probably any other individuals in these educational communities, uh, technology departments understand the complexities and the work and the monitoring and the maintenance that it takes to support better information exchange and to do things uh, to do to do things to be innovative, getting information to everyone who needs it in the most efficient and effective manner. And a lot of times, you probably feel like you're playing this balancing act between again the reliability, maintenance, supporting, integration, deployment, setting things up, maintaining it, um, and, and and it can it can be it can be difficult, right? So to help Amy be successful, apparently provides kind of her supporting cast in this sphere with some of the following tools. First, we'll start with something that's a little bit farther away maybe from, from Amy's direct, uh, you know, from, 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 her, from her classwork and the things that really are relevant to her. We developed something we call our mobile admin app. It's fast, reliable, accessible. So this is an administrator app that allows them to quickly and easily send messages to whoever they need in their organization. So in times, whether this is an emergency, uh, or whether this is sending out simply a, a superintendent sending out a message uh, congratulating you know all the honor roll students or something, but but this this ability to have this the, the this ability to have it right in the palm of your hand is powerful. We had a school district Leander ISD located uh, kind of by San just north of San Antonio, Texas. They had a gas leak at one of their elementary schools, and the communication director was on his way to a funeral, not at the school, right? Unable to get on his laptop or his computer to send messages in the traditional way of, you know, get going to, a, to the web page. So he was notified about the gas leak at the elementary school. Instantly was able to contact all the parents of that elementary school and let them know that the students were being moved to a different location temporarily, and that's where the parents needed to pick them up. It, co it was coordinated great, and he was so happy that he had that ability to, to send that information right, uh, send, out, send out those messages right from his, right from his phone. Um, the, this administrator app also has you know, a directory of all students and parents and staff, again, right in the palm of your hand. And, and, with, with, and we, we, if we have time at the end, I guess, we'll, I'll demonstrate exactly kind of what this app looks like um, and, and, you, and, and let you kind of see what the, what the buttons do. But, but many of you are familiar with tools kind of like this. Uh, so we'll, let's take a look at some other tools as they get closer to kind of kind of what uh, uh, closer to Amy individually and helping uh, administrators or teachers or whoever in this sphere to make her more successful. I want to talk about something which we've developed called attendance discovery. Um, attendance discovery. This is attendance advanced attendance management tool. It helps to identify, track, and communicate with at-risk students and their parents. Attendance is a big deal, right? It's tied to funding. We know that if the kids aren't in class, if they're not in school, right, they're not going to be learning, right? So with Teacher Reach, teachers can, can view, uh, or, I'm sorry, with Attendance Discovery, attendance, uh, it, it provides us transparency into your district's uh, attendance policies and actions. You know, what, what, there, there, there are attendance policies that need to be followed. There's letters by, mandated by the state or by the district that need to be printed out and sent it out sent out to parents and to the home at certain thresholds, whether that's 10 days in a row, six days, you know, your daily attendance call out. So a, a window into transparency into what the attendance policies are at the, at the, uh, at the school or at the school district. 
graphs can kind of display. Well, the, first let's talk about watch lists. Watch lists can be created to identify, proactively identify students who are who are who are on track to be habitually truant. Right? Proactive tools to identify those students and engage with them and, and, and with their parents before they start to become a problem. Right? How can attendance secretaries and how can attendance policies do that? Apparently, just provide a tool to be able to do something like that. And then being able to track and, and, met, and graph out uh, your attendance trends over time, as well as many other events or messages that may affect attendance, allowing administrators, again, to identify trends and to find out what's working. Stan has seen to a unified school district in California. We, we, we have a great success story with them about Halloween. So they identified that the day after Halloween, after kind of reviewing their attendance history and, and, and doing a little bit of analysis, they saw that the day after Halloween, they always had horrible attendance. It, they just seem, the kids just seem to stay home, whether it's from an you know, overload on sugar or whatever it is, you know, staying up late that night. So they were proactive. They sent out some messages home, you know, did a campaign to listen, parents, the day after Halloween, it's still important, right? Get your kids there. They're able to do some other things outside of you know, what parenting can provide and just sending out uh, communications and, and sending out messages and things like that. And they saw a great increase. I, I should have I looked at that the, the exact number, but they saw a, a significant increase into their, into their attendance uh, that following day, and they were really happy about what they were able to accomplish. So that's kind of attendance discovery, right? Influencing things in that school sphere uh, a, a tool for administrators to, to, to proactively track and, and, and become more involved with the, with the attendance policies and attendance uh, happenings at the, at the school. Another tool. I apologize for moving quickly. I've got a lot to cover, a lot, of cool, a lot of cool things I just want to give you a taste of, and then we can talk later and hopefully we can uh, meet in the future sometime. This is Teacher Reach. So Teacher Reach, this moves even closer to Amy's educational life, right? So ParentLink has developed a tool that makes two-way teacher-to-parent communication fast, easy, and secure. TeacherReach it was designed by educators, you know, who understand kind of the, how critical it is to involve parents as part of the educational process. When I go back to the classroom, which I plan to do, I plan to go back to, and teach in the classroom. I hope I can my school invest into something like this, the ability for me to quickly and easily engage mom and dad and, and communicate with them. So Teacher Reach has an easy to use kind of drag, click and drag and drop uh, interface uh, where teachers can select from a large message library and send messages either to their entire class, as you can see kind of here is a picture day, you know, or to individuals or selected individuals. And then when receiving a message, either by phone or email or text or whatever mode, parents can then immediately respond back to the teacher. Right? A true attempt to try to have this two-way conversation, two-way communication, instead of it only being one way, which is, what, which, is, which is happening a lot out there right now. So reports help to track positive versus negative biased messages. Right? And, helps, and, helps, and helps to kind of influence the types of messages being sent home. There should be at least a three-to-one ratio between positive to negative messages home. Studies have shown that positive messages sent home are much more effective at changing behavior and, in, and, and improving positive results. And then we've also built in kind of an administrative approval, approval tool, right, that allows administrators uh, to, to become engaged and, and to offer kind of closer teacher mentoring uh, if needed to approve some of those messages before they go out. So that's teacher reach. Awesome, awesome tool. It kind of, like you can see on the right here, it kind of influences the two spheres. We're getting closer to school and family and, 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 and where they kind of cross there because it's, it's such a great tool to getting the teachers and the parents communicating, teacher and, and home communicating. So let's step back and let's talk about the home then and the things that we've done there. So we're, we're moving closer to Amy with Teacher Reach, but I want to introduce the first of its kind mobile application we've created called uh, called mobile parent. Apparently we believe that the number one predictor of student success is parental involvement and research supports it and it's supporting it more and more. A lot of, a lot of people who work here at, at Paralink are ex-educators and, and their parents, a lot of them, right? and they understand 
that that is very, very true. That when mom and dad, even if they don't have a college education themselves, just them by saying, hey, Amy, how are you doing on your homework? Hey, what's this assignment that looks like you missed? Or what's this event that's, that's happening? Just those type of conversations give Amy the support and, 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 and statistics and research shows that, her, that she is more and more likely to be successful. So I want to talk about... Um, uh, about this mobile parent app, and I want to show you exactly what it looks like and kind of show what we've done to help mom and dad stay involved in Amy's school. So let's see if this will work. This should. I tested it like 50 million times. Aha, perfect. Okay, so if we look at our mobile, uh, mobile parent app here, in the palm of their hand, one place that mom and dad can, can gain, can gain the, the relevant information for their students. So first, they can, first of all, receive the, view any messages that have been sent home. Right? They can view, review those about any, any messages regarding either school closures or, or attendance or anything like that. Right? Carol Brady here, being the mom, she has access to her contact information and some of these things. All this information, I'll talk about this more, all this information not being stored you know, at, here at ParentLink or in the app itself, right? it's coming from your student information system or, or whatever database that holds this information. That's where it should come from, the school or the district. So if we look at Marsha Brady here, look at all this information. So mom and dad can see upcoming assignments. Check those out. Dive into those. What are those? Any missing assignments that might be coming? Class information, right? Grades, assignments. So dr let's say we want to drill down on geometry, this geometry class here. So mom can, mom can look at assignments. What are some of the upcoming assignments? What are some, maybe some of the missing assignments? How has the attendance been in that class? Have we, have we not been going to class? Is that why we're getting the C plus? Contact the teacher. Get a teacher a call right here from your smartphone or email the teacher. Right? Are there some sort of class resource, syllabuses, class websites, all these things? All this information right, can be pulled into one location right here in the palm of the hand for mom and dad to be able to review. Library books. right? What library books are outstanding? Uh, A Wrinkle in Time. Great book. Ender's Game also. Uh, and then Cafeteria Balance. So a lot of information you hear about Marsha that is very, very relevant to mom and dad. Bobby Brady, the same thing. But one more thing I want to show uh, on the settings page here, this is what is really awesome. So let's say that, that mom wants to be notified, some sort of a, an alert, a little badge that pops up on this app, if a grade drops below a certain, a certain grade, right, if there's a certain threshold. So they can turn this grade alert on, and they can set that threshold to be whatever it is, okay? I don't want this to go below a C-. minus. If it does, as soon as that's updated, it does, I want to be notified because I want to have a conversation with Amy, right, and talk with her about what's, what's happening. How can we help? What, what's, what are things that maybe are distracting her, maybe things that she's struggling with, right? So same thing with low scores, if there's a, an assignment that's updated, if there's a new message that's been sent. Different settings here that can be set up to provide different alerts uh, to, to, to inform mom and dad about what's happening with the student. Powerful, powerful app, the first of its kind, right? It, it, it's, not a, it's not a new idea to be able to show grades on some sort of a mobile app. That's, that's a lot of, a lot of uh, companies have come out with some sort of grades in the mobile app, and you could even go to the website and go through your web browser. Uh, but putting in this, this form with the notification and the communication pieces on top of it that apparently provides, we think that that's very, very powerful. Okay, so let's go back then and take a look. Uh, come back to our presentation. So that's, so that's mobile, uh, mobile parents, and parents are really, really excited about this tool. Districts are happy to roll it out, too, because it provides everything they dreamed should be in the palm of Amy's, you know, kind of, of Amy's parents' uh, hand. So let's move on, and let's look at the community. So really, really excited about what we've done with the community, because this sometimes is an untapped area uh, where, where, uh, where, where K-12 uh, uh, solution providers are not providing any, any good tools here. So, so we'll move to the community. There's lots of individuals in this arena who influence the future of Amy's success. They influence how well she's going to be, how well she's going to do in school and, and, and work and life. And these community members, they want an easy way to, 
to stay up to date on the, in the happenings of the school or individually in what's happening in, in, with Amy. So, and this is the newest edition. This app is the newest one of our, of our kind of suite of mobile applications, and we're super, super excited about it. So we call it Mobile District. It's giving your entire community all the information they want, uh, when they want it, can want where they want it. So we take website information from the district website, high school website, middle school website, which are a lot of times are these like independent, disparate websites uh, that have a different feel, have a different look, there's stuff located in different areas, uh, and sometimes it can be a big mess, right? And then also the other conversations that are happening, Facebook, Twitter, RSS feeds, all that information uh, coming into one place. It's the easiest way for a school district to give parents, students, and community members everything they need and to help them to understand kind of what's going on. So let me show you what it looks like. See if this process works again. Bingo. Okay. So mobile district. So I first want to start with this. I ended with the settings options for a mobile parent, but I want to I want to talk about mobile district here. This this mobile uh, district app it can be customized to look exactly like your school district. You know, with its own skin. It can have customized options, and we created this one for Aurora Public Schools. But if we look at the start with the settings here, so it, when a community member or parent or whoever downloads this, this app, they can select which schools they want to receive news for or sports or calendar information. And they can, you know, they can target specific schools they want or everybody. They can target the entire district. Uh, but we felt that was important to be able to give them very relevant information. Okay? So the next thing that we've created. Some of these are, are custom apps. For, for Aurora here, we created, we created kind of just a, a, a simple window into their pay, pay, uh, payment portal option. Uh, but we have the Facebook and the Twitter uh, uh, locations here where it's bringing it all in one place. There's a directory where they can, you can go in and view, again, similarly to the mobile admin app where they can view the, uh, the, the school uh, location and information there. Uh, we created something called TipLine and added it to this, this app. So uh, the ability to leave an anonymous tip, whether that's for bullying or for uh, you know, any other uh, threats or hazards or anything that might be happening, right? they can do that right here from the app. Superintendent corner. So what's the superintendent saying? Right? The superintendent, if he has a blog, if he's posting things on Twitter, uh, if he has a Facebook page, any place where he's putting information, right? pulling that all into one place that can be accessed by, again, parents, uh, students, community members, anyone that wants to know what is the superintendent saying, right? Very, very important. And again, there's the option to see, to, to view the notifications. If a parent downloads this, they can also log in, you, you see at the top of the screen, and then they would have that same information that's kind of in their mobile parent app as well. On the front page, uh, this is really slick. So we've pulled in all the news information. This, this is news articles from the different websites. Uh, from the district that's scrolling across here, but they could drill down and look at the different news articles, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, YouTube, all the different media that's going on uh, that's being pushed out to the community, bringing it all into one place where they can view that, they can read through the articles and, and see some of the information and read, and read up on what's happening, right? Getting more engaged, more involved. Sports, this was a big one. This came as a request from our customers. They said, hey, if you do this, you got to do sports. That's one of the things that people really like to follow, they really like to read articles about, right? And so we were able to put that sports information. And again, the settings here, so they can set up which sports they want to receive information about, what sports information, right? And then calendars, which is awesome. The ability, there's calendars, there's the school calendar, the district calendar, there's all these calendars everywhere. Why can't we bring that all in one place, right? Bring, in, bring into a single application. And then if a parent or a community member wanted to copy that, that that event to their own phone, right? They're able to do that here. So that's kind of our district, our mobile district app. Super excited about it. One of our newest apps that we've come up with can be custom created for each school district, and bringing all of this, all of this information, this conversation that's happening in the one place, uh, which is again supporting this idea of better information exchange. And so that brings up a good point I'll, I'll bring back to my, into the presentation here. So there is a conversation that is happening, right, between students and parents and community members or whoever on, on social media platforms, on, 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 you know, through texting, RSS, wherever, right? 
districts with tools such as these, with these 21st century leadership tools, right, they have the opportunity to be a part of the whole conversation. Everything, everything that's going on out there. Okay, so I hope that gives you a little bit better idea, kind of a peek as to kind of what we do and kind of our philosophy and, and how, we're, how we're thinking about approaching school-to-home communication and creating better educational communities. So to wrap things up, and again, I want to allow for a little more, you know, allow for time for question and answers at the end. I just want to cover a few more things about Parently to kind of let you know a little bit more about us. We've sent out a lot of messages. We've worked with a lot of different school districts uh, across the country, and we're proud of, of the work that we've been able to do with those school districts. We're proud of our retention rate. Most school districts who partner with ParentLink, right, as we continue to innovate, we continue to provide new things for them, right, they usually stick with us. Five out of the ten largest districts in the nation use ParentLink. We work with some really big customers. We work with some really small districts as well, right? We just had a very, very small district from Texas sign up just this last week, uh, which was awesome. And we have over 20 years of experience working in the K with K through 12 institutions. That is our single focus. We've never, you know, uh, branched out into other areas. It's always been through K through 12, and we're working with educators. Uh, and looking back at our unique history, right, you, you can kind of get a better understanding of how this worked. So that young man right there at the bottom of the, the bottom picture, that is our founder and CEO, John Graff. Uh, and apparently it's kind of first step toward K-12 communication innovation. It came with a product called, you know, which, which they called at that time Homework Hotline. And it was a tool that allowed teachers to record messages uh, that on, on, on kind of a um, voicemail box that could then be accessed by parents and students through the touchtone phone. They could listen to what the assignments were or listen to what the, the message was. Uh, and so it was that first, it was kind of the first product and the first step towards the, the goal and mission of what ParentLink wanted to be and what John wanted to create uh, with these, uh, these school-to-home communication tools. So in our mission statement regarding improving student learning, it hasn't changed since those first years of ParentLink. It's been the same. And so since that time, though, we've continued to be innovative with school-to-home communication capabilities. We were the first to do a web administrator district-wide solution. I mentioned we're the first one now to come out with a, with a parent app, right? Web portals, putting grades, attendance, and contact information up on the web, we're actually the first ones to do that, right? Our, our John Graff was on the board of directors for SIF, uh, and, and we're, we're truly SIF certified, and we work hard with districts that want to try, uh, try out SIF and try out that, that idea of having the, their, their systems communicating in a single location and doing that seamlessly. And we were the first to do multi-campus multi call combining, uh, which was which was awesome when it first came out. And now a lot of people have, have copied us, and you know they can thank us for uh, for kind of leading the way, I guess. But uh, but we're proud of some of the things that we've been able to do there. Um, and many of our ideas kind of came from our clients. I mentioned that five of the ten largest districts have have partnered uh, with ParentLink, and here's just a few of them. And what's interesting is each district is so unique in many ways. Uh, you know, but but what is not unique is that their need to create better educational communities. And their need for tools that reach parents, staff, students, community members, the way they want to be reached, the way they need to be reached. We're really excited about some of our other partnerships, Google and Bing. Uh, we're, we're happy about our partnerships with companies like these. They allow us to be more efficient in, our in, our, you know, in, 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 in better information exchange with things like language translation. Uh, uh, and, and unique, what, GIS and GPS mapping, right? We're able to translate to 59 different languages uh, with the help of Google and Bing. We can, we can even do text-to-speech in 38 of those languages. And surprisingly, it's pretty good. And both Google and Bing, they do a pretty good job for some of the languages. It's not that, that, that traditional robot talk that a lot of the text-to-speech engines provide, uh, so which, which is awesome. And working well, with, you know, working well with other educational and software Educational software and hardware providers, it, it's, it's essential. And we, we have to be able to work well with these companies uh, to be able to, to, again, provide more efficient information exchange. Take, for instance, student information systems. You know, we work with some all the major uh, student information systems. And again, this is fundamental that we work well with these systems. Uh, so to do that, we've even developed a product uh, which we call DataLink, 
which we try, which, which we've developed that, that allows for easier, faster, and more secure data transfer. We try to, we try to work well with these student information systems. Because ParentLink really can be that central hub, and, and it's, and we, what we want to do is we want to be that central hub that can, that can support and grow these educational communities. And we want to take seemingly complex information from all these disparate systems. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. All these systems with all the different and data in different fields and in different formats, right, from a variety of sources. But we want to be that central hub to provide tools that allow for better information exchange, to be a part of the entire conversation, to support, to give Amy what she needs, Amy and all the other stakeholders that influence her what she needs, that, that information in the right way. So in everything that we've talked about today, from the apps to attendance discovery to teach reach, it's all included in our suite of products which we call ParentLink 9. It really is a complete solution for districts, you know, concerning all the ideas discussed today, right? We didn't even have time to talk about some of our basic things like custom messaging, emergency messaging, uh, you know, we even have some things for transportation, our people are fantastic, our account teams, the, the custom campaigns that we're able to do. Uh, but a complete package for districts who are really wanting to think differently about school-to-home communication, uh, who really want to take their parental engagement uh, to the next level by supporting these, these uh, uh, educational communities. So that's all I have. Let's talk, let's talk more in the future. You know, there's my contact information. We'd love to schedule a time to learn more about you and your district, and I promise it will be a completely different conversation than you've ever had uh, with regards to school-to-home communication uh, and parental involvement. There's my email address. You can follow us, us also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash parentlink.net. Um, ho ho hopefully this has been informative, and uh, again, thank you for, uh, for allowing me this, this brief time to to talk about some of the things that we're trying to do here at Paramount. Q, back to you. All right. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. Great information. Um, we do have a few uh, minutes for some questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to put those through on the chat or the Q&A. Um, we did have a question come through, uh, Jonathan, right off the bat. It's, uh, the question is, does this work with Infinite Campus? Yeah, it does. It definitely works with Infinite Campus. We've, we have a lot of different school districts who work with Infinite Campus. Uh, we're trying to build an even better relationship with them as they move a lot of their as they move their student information systems, uh, their, their 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 infrastructure more into the cloud, right? Which which can which can simplify things and can also complicate things. Uh, but we definitely work with Infinite Campus. Okay. Uh, another question that came through is, uh, does let's see, it says, hi, this seems to work only in the U.S. What about Canada? Works in Canada as well. We do we. Actually, we don't have any districts in Canada, but uh, but the, but the but the process would be similar. We've worked with some districts uh, that you know that have tried pieces of of our product and have kind of explored different you know working with different things of it. Uh, but uh, we, we we'd want to have a conversation. We want to sit down. We'd want to try to make it work if it doesn't. Right. But we we uh, I'm pretty confident that it would work in in Canada uh, just as easy as it would work here in the states. Cool. Great question. Okay, great. Um, let's see. And then if anyone else, let's see. Oh, does this scale down to a product that works well with individual schools or private schools? Yeah, it does. We have some some individual schools um, that, that utilize our system or utilize pieces of, of what ParentLink 9 has to offer. Um, the Sometimes the problems that we run into sometimes is that individual schools uh, they sometimes don't have the the technical expertise or the technical just the resources, basically the resources to be able to sometimes uh, provide data or to, to you know to help, if, especially if they want to do something like SIF and setting up ZIS zones and and some of these other things. But definitely, we can work with individual schools. Perfect. 